So, quick announcement before I get started here. So you guys might have noticed that I did a written review on my channel. If you go on my channel and look at the discussion tab, I believe it's called, I did a written review for the movie How to Get Ahead in Advertising. Sometimes I'll watch more movies than I usually do reviews. I try to do two movie reviews a week. So this is like a good way to like compensate without having to go through the whole process of editing and shooting and making a thumbnail and all that good stuff. But that's not the movie I watched that I want to review. I really want to review the movie Tu Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Kind of a strange title. I, I don't think I like it. But real quick, what is this movie about? This movie follows three drag queens played by Swayze, Wesley Snipes, and John Leguizamo. They're going to a drag show in Hollywood, but their plans get spoiled as their car breaks down and they're stranded in this small Nebraska town. Guys, to say this movie is strange would be an understatement. Not as much the movie itself. The movie itself is actually quite tame. More tame than one might expect. Uh, just the fact that this movie exists more. This movie stars Patrick Swayze in the lead role. Patrick Swayze at the time was known for being a pretty boy. He, he was like a dancer and he was a, like a very handsome guy and had very manly features. But he was also a dancer. This is quite a departure for him. Wesley Snipes, this guy is a muscle-bound badass known for being in movies like Demolition Man and Blade and stuff like that. So for him to be in this movie, that's quite a departure as well. And John Leguizamo, which the least surprising of the three would be the casting of John Leguizamo, given that he's more of a comedic actor. But I love John Leguizamo and everything. I love all of these actors, actually. I love all of these actors, and I'll watch anything they're in. John Leguizamo, I talked about this in my Land of the Dead review. Great actor. I'll watch anything with John Leguizamo. He always gives his 100%. Even when he was playing, uh, what was the name of his character in Spawn? Well, even when he's playing in that shitty movie Spawn, he's giving his 100%. Easy with that face, I mean. Oops. A wet one. I hope I didn't stain my underwear. Ah, look at that. Skid marks. And Wesley Snipes, damn it, I've been wanting a Wesley Snipes comeback for years now. Come on, man. Where's Blade 4? It's never gonna happen with Disney Marvel, but I would have loved to see a Blade 4. And Wesley Snipes, everything he's in, he's a fucking badass. I, I've been wanting the Wesley Snipes comeback forever. I'm still waiting for it. He was recently in a few Spike Lee movies. He was in, uh, what was that movie? Chirac. I thought he was really good in Chirac. He'll show up in movies every now and then and people are like, I forgot how good Wesley Snipes was. I was like, no, I didn't. I'm dying for his comeback. He was so good in Dolomite. Dolomite is my name. He was great in that movie. Let's have the Wesley Snipes comeback. Not only is the cast of this movie weird, the production of it is a little strange. So apparently, Robin Williams and Steven Spielberg were on a plane and they were reading the script to this movie. And they really liked the script to this movie. They hired the director, I forget what the di director's name was, uh, she has a really weird name. But she was nine months pregnant when they wanted to start shooting. And Steven Spielberg even said, hey, you know what, I'd be down to direct a few scenes of this movie. His production company, by the way, Amblin Entertainment, uh, actually produced this movie. When I saw this movie open and I, f I saw that Steven Spielberg's production company is making a movie about drag queens, and the drag queens are Patrick Swayze, Wesley Snipes, and John Leguizamo, what the fuck? Am I living in a parallel dimension? You know what this feels like? You know in movies when they'll like go to a parallel dimension and everything kind of feels off and weird and stuff like that? I feel like I live in that dimension. I feel like somewhere out there there's a normal dimension where this movie doesn't exist. But I'm happy I'm in this dimension and I get to see this movie because I actually really enjoyed this movie, you know? What does it say about my personality? About who I am? I don't know, okay? Am I, a, am I, a, I'm not gonna say anything, I'm, I might get cancelled. But guys, come on. I know I like uh, violent movies. I reviewed 31 zombie movies in 31 days. I did a zombie-thon, okay? 
But I'm not just a gore hound. You give me a good movie with drag queens, I'm gonna like it. And I don't know how this movie will uh, stand in 2021. I don't have any friends that are drag queens or stuff like that. I don't know if this holds up. I don't know if they'd be offended because non-drag queens are playing drag queens and stuff like that. When I first heard of this movie and I saw that it was kind of made in the 90s and stuff like that, I was like, okay, this can easily go down the Mrs. Doubtfire or the, like, every Eddie Murphy movie where it's like, teehee, isn't it funny that the guys are dressed as women? But they don't really do that in this movie, which I thought was quite shocking, to be honest, for a movie from this decade. When these characters arrive in the Nebraska town, they're greeted like normal people. People don't even notice that they're drag queens. So once these drag queens arrive in this Nebraska town, you find out that their touch of fabulousness can take this small town that has issues and they turn it around. What this movie reminds me of It's as if you fucking take the cast of Queer Eye and put them in in Nebraska. I'll go as far as to say, this movie is fabulous! And all the performances here are really fun. Uh, You forget that this movie stars Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze is so good in this movie. And they each have their own personalities too. Patrick Swayze is like the elegant, like, uh, sophisticated one. Well, pumpkins, it looks like it comes down to that age-old decision style Mm. or substance Mm. Wesley Snipes is a bit of more of the ratchet one darling if you're going to become a drag queen you're gonna have to learn these things what do you mean be a drag queen I am a drag queen oh child no 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 you will simply put a boy in a dress when a straight man puts on a dress and gets his sexual kicks he is a transvestite When a man is a woman trapped in a man's body and has the little operation, he is a transsexual. I know that. When a gay man has way too much fashion sense for one gender, he is a drag queen. Thank you. And when a tired little Latin boy puts on a dress, he is simply a boy in a dress. And John Leguizamo is like the uh, ditzy kind of one. And they really work well off each other. And like I said, you kind of forget that th- this movie stars John Leguizamo, Patrick Swayze, and Wesley Snipes. Because f- they just do such a good job in this movie. It's actually quite amazing. Never does it feel like a caricature. Never does it feel like a parody. It kind of just feels like real drag queens that just like being fabulous. This movie really uh, pays tribute to the drag queen lifestyle. RuPaul even shows up in this movie uh, uh, very briefly at the beginning of the movie. Other cameos in this movie uh, include Julie Newmar, who actually shows up in the movie, and Robin Williams uh, shows up in this movie as well. Like I said, he read the script with Steven Spielberg and they enjoyed it a lot. And I wonder what would happen if Steven Spielberg actually ended up directing this movie. This is a very weird decision for Steven Spielberg given that he's done E.T. and Indiana Jones and Jaws and stuff like that just these fantastical adventure movies and then about the time where this movie was released he started making more dramas stuff like Schindler's List and stuff like that so this would have been quite a departure for Spielberg quite frankly I would have loved to see Spielberg direct this just to have that weird movie in his filmography I guess But you can really see why Steven Spielberg was drawn to this movie. The script of this movie is more about how these drag queens, which are these big eccentric characters, but how they touch the lives of normal people. And I'm not going to lie, I'm one of those guys, I never understood drag queens and what it was all about. Like, I'll see RuPaul's Drag Race, and I'll just kind of be like, why? Like, <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. I might be a little uh, a little behind on the whole progression thing. But this movie kind of, like, demonstrates it's, like, more about a liberation and more about feeling free and being yourself. And that's exactly what these three characters teach to the people in this small town. I was worried because I thought this movie was going to be a straight-up road trip movie. From what it looked like, just judging from the cover, you have all three of the characters in a car. I thought it was going to be a road trip movie about them trying to get to Hollywood. But then they break down in this town pretty early on, and I figured 
oh, okay, we're not leaving this town, okay. Usually in road trip movies, the part that always sags is when they start the road trip and they end up in the town and uh, there's like a, a dingy town. And it, the movies usually slow down when that happens. So I was kind of concerned when I thought saw that was the direction of the movie, that the whole movie was going to take place in this town. But again, it's more about these characters touching the lives of different people in this town. You have one girl in this town who's being abused by her husband. You have this sheriff going around who wants to arrest the three girls because uh, they knocked the sheriff unconscious. That guy is played by Chris Penn, who many might recognize from Reservoir Dogs. Other people, there's a girl called Bobby Lee, and Bobby Lee has a crush on another guy in the town, but then John Leguizamo also has a crush on the same guy, and there's a love triangle going on there. Again, it's just fun to see how a little bit of fabulous, just a pinch of fabulous, can affect different people's lives, and I feel like that's what drew Steven Spielberg to this project as a producer. Okay, here's the here's the thing in the movie that made me fucking die of laughter. If the sheriff, played by Chris Penn, he's going around, he's on a hunt for these women, and he's cursing, and he's saying a bunch of homophobic shit, and uh, meanwhile, you have the guy who uh, beats his wife. At the end of the movie, they meet at a bar, and Chris Penn is kind of drunk, and uh, they start talking, and it's very heavily implied that <laughs> they're gonna fuck, which is the funniest twist ending ever. How you doing? Okay, I'm doing okay. What can I get you? Bourbon. Is your shoe? <laughs> no, they're not, they're not my shoe. But I'm looking for the person that wore that shoe. It's like this whole time he was angry because he himself was gay. I thought that was a funny twist. I don't know how the drag queen community regards this movie. I feel like it was tastefully done, in my opinion. But like I said, uh, I, I, I got bad taste sometimes. And I'll say stuff that I shouldn't say and stuff like that. So, in my opinion, this movie had very good taste because, yes, these characters are your stereotypical drag queens and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, people in this movie treat these characters like characters and not like parody or satire or stuff like that. Even at the end, there's one of the characters who said, hey, like, I know you're a man, I just never said it this whole time. There's this thing called the Bechamel test. This is going off topic, but it'll come around, I promise. There's this thing called the Bechamel test where it evaluates if a female character is a dull female character or a developed female character. And I feel like you can do the same for any kind of character. So you can do the same for like a redneck character. Is it just a redneck or is it a well-developed character? Or a drag queen. Is it a drag queen stereotype or is it a well-developed character? And I feel like all of these characters are well-developed characters, even though they're doing a very flashy, flamboyant performance. And for that reason, I quite enjoyed this movie. To Wong Fu, thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. I, again, I don't like the title. I think the title is stupid, but whatever. You can't win everything. Guys, I suggest you watch this movie. It might be hard to find on DVD. I came across this DVD. I got pretty lucky. But uh, give it a shot. See what you think. I'm curious. To Wong Fu, thanks for everything, Julie Numar.